Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about LinkPad and if you're a .NET developer and you don't know what LinkPad does then definitely carry on watching because it is so good for so many different use cases. I use it every day and it's amazing. So things like scripting and automation, very quick proof of concepts if you just need to knock something up quickly, database access like using link instead of SQL, getting rid of all those joins just saves a lot of time and plenty of other stuff too. Now, you might say that you can do all this stuff without LinkPad, but with LinkPad, on top of all those things, you also get the power of the dump window, which is so, so powerful. And I'll show that when I do the demo. So let's get started so we can see what I mean. So this is LinkPad. This is where you type your code. This is the output window, the dump window, which we'll see shortly. These are your database connections. Now, databases aren't the only use case for LinkPad, it's just one of them, but your database connections are there. And here you can specify a folder, and this is where all your LinkPad scripts can be. It's a shame you can't specify multiple folders, but what you can do is you can create symbolic links in here if you do need to have folders that reference, folders that are in projects, Git repositories or something. So this main window, we've got this drop down here. And by default, C sharp expression. So it means you can just type out something. Uh, let's do new.guid. Press a five. Oh, sorry, guid.new. Let's try again. And you can see it down here. If I press F5, you can see it's generating a new guid. If I do statement, or I can just add a semicolon and it'll switch it over automatically. Then if I have five now, it's not going to show anything. In statement view, this is more for if you're doing like a script, so you could do guid equals, you could do some other stuff, whatever. But as I say, it's not dumped anything out yet. Now that's because when you're not in expression mode, you've got to be quite explicit about what you dump out. And there's an extension method called dump, which is on all objects, and then you get the output. You've also got program. If you do program, you get a main and you can define methods, fields, classes, and all that kind of stuff. If I just go back to expression. So this isn't really showing off the power of the dump window at all. So let's start building up on that. Here's one I made earlier. So oh, program. So this is just a class with two properties in. If I press F and I'm newing it up and dumping it out, if I press F5, then we can see here, it's dumped a table out. If I take this a bit further now, and this is the same, except we've got a nested class as well. So here, if I run this one, then we can see we have a nested table. So we've got the table and a table inside it. Let's look at another object type. So I'm just doing a regex.match, so this returns the match object, F5. Again, we get a nice visualization showing the different properties and more complex properties and all this kind of thing. I mentioned that these script files are saved as .link .link files. You can run these on the command line. There's a command line tool included called LP run. So all of these are, you can run if you want them automation um, in your CI CD or whatever, you just do LP run, then the script name. So you can put any C sharp in here. If I press F4, then we get, we can add new get packages. So I find this so, so useful for just POCing NuGet packages I've not tried before. So let's look at an, at an example, actually. Let's say memcached. So again, adding memcached via here. And I've spun up memcached in the background in Docker. So it's just, just running here. And if I press F5 now, we've got that dumped out. And that is, I'm just storing a value I'm getting it and then I'm dumping out the receive value. So you can see very easily you can POC different NuGet, different NuGet packages. So we mentioned database access before. So I've created a little 
example database. So a very, very standard order management system. So orders, order items, obviously order items are, are sub are referenced by orders, products are referenced by order items and users against the order. So it's a standard order management system. If I just drag this across here, or I could have chosen that connection from this drop down, then this window is in the context of that database. So I can start typing, I get IntelliSense. So if I start typing order orders and I press F5, so I'm not typing select star from orders, I'm just typing orders, pressing F5, and that dumps that out into a table, which we can see here. One thing you'll notice is that foreign keys have hyperlinks. So I can click on order items now and drill down without doing a join. I can drill down on the order items in that order. I can drill down on what product that relates to. So I can drill down even further. So you can see, like, imagine this alone where I'm browsing through, clicking through in SQL. We can also quickly do edits. So if I say var order equals, uh, I need a statement, uh, orders.single, and then we say we want order, ID. we want this one we're interested in. Oh, that paste didn't work. Let's try again. And then I can say order dot, say I wanted to change the total price, for example, and then submit changes. So that's now updated it. So if I just double click on orders now, so that's just executing that bit. So I can select again, click this first one. We can see that's now updated it. Another way we can update is if I, in fact, let's get rid of all this now. So we just have orders again. If I change this, so this is showing output like this rendered. This actually shows a grid. So if I choose this one and a five, I get this view and we've got an edit data button here, which means I can just change that to something else. And that's changed it. So there's a few different ways of editing databases. Linkpad also has a utility static class with a bunch of functions in. There's a whole bunch of functionality in here. The one I was going to show is image. So we can render an image. You can put a URL in here or byte data. There's a few different options, a few different overloads. So if we look at um, a query I made earlier, which is querying against this database. And it's just doing an anonymous object, picking out, so this picking out what I want to render. But you'll notice when I'm selecting the order items, I'm do, using this util.image. And we can see inline images now. So you can really see how powerful this is very, very quickly with minimal effort. And you get the IntelliSense and everything, so it's quite quick to knock stuff up. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I'm a big Vim fan. There's also Vim mode, so you've got all the Vim shortcuts. So I think that's just in the preferences. Vi mode, so you can enable that here, which is pretty cool. And I think those are the main bits, but it's kind of, as I say, I use this literally every single day and just for so many different use cases, I would definitely recommend checking it out. A few things to point out though, it's, it's Windows only at the moment and it's it's not free and I don't know, the, the trial version, the free trial doesn't support IntelliSense, which I kind of think the author's missing a trick here because anyone trialing it is going to hate the experience because of no IntelliSense and then dismiss it. Where actually, if he'd, if he'd put IntelliSense into the free version, then more people are going to want to try it. And then they might buy the paid for version because it's got NuGet and various stuff. So if we actually look at the pricing page, then the author's got a few different versions. 
because so the developer edition does have NuGet integration, which kind of I would highly recommend. But then you've got the full debugging in the premium. If you use it as much as me, it's going to pay itself back so so many times. So I would strongly recommend everyone just go straight for the premium because it's got all the full feature set, including debugging and things. Lastly, before I finish off, I have did, this was a few years ago now, I did a blog post series, three blog posts with various tips and tricks. So I've just got a whole bunch of just short tips and tricks. And it's the three part series. And also on the podcast, if you don't know, I host the Unhandled Exception podcast. And back in episode 11, which was uh, a couple of years ago now, actually, um, Joe was on the show talking about LinkPad, which I would highly recommend checking out. Cool, so I hope that was useful. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe below. And if you can help me spread the word on social media, that would be amazing. And yeah, see you next time.